IUI stands for intrauterine insemination. That is a very basic technique by which we can increase the female's fertility. It can be performed, it's a very simple technique, it can be performed in the doctor's office also. IUI basically means that we put the man's sperms in the lady's womb. By this technique, we increase the chances of pregnancy. IUI stands for intrauterine insemination, where we put the man's sperms into the lady's womb. Now, before doing that, we have to of course collect the semen and prepare it and then push it back to the lady's womb. The best method of collecting the semen is to call him to the doctor's chamber or to the IUI clinic. There is a special collection room where it can be collected. There are certain techniques that you have to follow. It's there in all the clinics how to do it. The semen sample is collected in a nice container in a sterile sort of a way. It is then cleaned up, all the toxic material is removed, this is known as washing. And after washing, the semen is put inside the lady's womb, ideally from the point of collection to insemination. It should not exceed more than two hours. IUI is performed to increase the female's fertility. Now we have to remember that the female ovulates only once in a month. That's around the 14th or the 15th day of her menstrual cycle. So first we need to detect her time of ovulation and then the insemination or putting the semen back to the female womb has to take place within that time of ovulation. So the best time of doing insemination is around the time of ovulation, around three to four hours within the time of ovulation. That gives you the maximum results. An IUI technique wise is very simple. It can be performed in any doctor's chamber, requires minimum of equipment. If you have ever taken a pap smear before, it feels like a pap smear. There is a cuscose speculum or some other speculum that is put into the lady's vagina to separate the, the walls of vagina to expose the cervix and then a catheter and a syringe are put together inside the womb. As a as a painful exercise does not cause any pain, there could be some embarrassment and there could be some amount of pain in a few patients where the cervix is a little difficult to negotiate. See, it is very difficult to talk about success rates for any procedure in abstract terms. You have to know the lady's age, how long have you been trying, what is the reason why we are doing an IUI. As a ballpark, I can tell you that it is anywhere between 10 to 15 percent per attempt if you are giving medication to help them to get pregnant. Uh, but this is per attempt. So with every subsequent attempt, the chances actually increase till about three or four attempts. After that, the chances do not really increase. Uh, per reason wise or per reason of duration of infertility wise, I would say IUI works best if the duration of infertility is not very high, it is less than three years or four years and the, re the lady is reasonably young, maybe less than 34 years old. Uh, if it is polycystic ovarian syndrome or she is not ovulating, her chances of success are pretty high, 20-25%. If it is insemination with donor sperms, the chances are very high, 20-25%. But if it is because of unexplained infertility or endometriosis or ma male factor, poor quality sperms, then the success is not really very good. It is around 5-7% to only. By the process of washing, what we are doing is we are separating the healthy sperms from the seminal plasma. Now you have to remember when the man ejaculates, what he gives out is the semen and semen contains the plasma, some toxic material and the live sperms. What we have to do is to remove the healthy sperms from this plasma, suspend it in a nutritional media and then push it into the lady's womb. Once the sperms have been taken out from the plasma, they do not survive for long, they do not survive for more than 3-4 hours. So then it becomes critical to use these sperms to put it inside the womb as soon as possible after they have been washed. I would put it at 2 hours maximum after washing for us to inseminate the lady to get the best results. Insemination is in, 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 a, in a way just a modified form of intercourse. So there is no necessity for somebody to lie down after the insemination process is over. Some people might prefer to lie down to relax and which, we is, which is absolutely welcome, they can do so. But medically there is no need for lying down after insemination. A 5 minute, 10 minute rest is more than enough after which you can get up 
and start on your work which is absolutely okay. Uh, not uh, really. IUI is just a modified form of intercourse. So after an IUI, you can do pretty much what you were doing before. There are a couple of things that we ask you not to. That is go for a deep water swimming, to use a water bath in the bathtub to get a shower. But other than that, you can have a completely normal life. IUI is done to increase pregnancy rates. And we have realized over experience and over time that the best sperms are obtained if the abstinence is around three to four days. If it is more than that, then the sperms are dead. And then the semen has a lot of these dead sperms that doesn't help us. And if the abstinence is less than three days, then there's a chance that the sperm count may not be optimum. So if somebody is planning an IUI, the best thing would be to give a gap of three, four days prior to insemination, not to ejaculate or have sexual contact during this time. IUI and intercourse are completely unrelated. IUI is a modified of intercourse, form of intercourse. We are putting the semen inside the womb. You can have intercourse pretty much any time after an IUI. It doesn't increase or decrease the results in any sort of a way. You should have a normal life and rather we say that maybe an intercourse is a good way of expressing your love for your partner so you can have a completely normal life immediately after an IUI. What we do is we put the semen through a catheter, the washed sperms through a catheter into the womb. The womb is designed in such a way, it's kind of folded on its itself. So there's no chance of the semen coming out of the uterus into back into the vagina and falling out, as you say. But because we put it through the cervix and there is a dislodging of the cervical mucus and we sometimes clean the cervix with the saline swab, there could be a weightness or a filling of uh, some liquid coming out after the IUI is, com is completed. Please understand that is not the semen coming out, that's some cervical discharge that's coming out and that's absolutely okay. A lady has two ovaries and she has around 10-12 antral follicles. These are small follicles at the start of her menstrual cycle. Only about one of these grows up. Now, if somebody is not getting pregnant, what we do is we give her medications, the fertility medications, by which more than one follicles grow up. Sometimes two, sometimes three, and sometimes even more. The idea of growing up two or three follicles is that the chances of pregnancy are increased because any one of these follicles can release a healthy egg that can be picked up by the tube and a fertilization can take place. At the same time, we have to remember more the number of follicles, higher is the chance of multiple pregnancy. In today's age, we want to avoid multiple pregnancy at any cost because that might lead to preterm deliveries and complications for your child. So the best option would be to go for two or three follicles at the most. That gives you a very good chance of pregnancy and does not have a very high risk of multiple pregnancies. If you have more than three follicles, it's better not to do anything in that cycle. If you have less than two follicles, maybe the chances are not that good. At one level, IUI helps in some patients with the suboptimal semen parameters. At another level, IUI is not the best solution for poor sperm count. We have to understand that IUI helps in some cases of male factor infertility where the quality is all right. It is just that the count is a little lesser than normal. But in most cases in men, what happens is if the quality is compromised and the count is compromised, maybe an IUI also will not work for them and they might have to go for higher forms of treatment such as IVF or ICSI which we will discuss later. For an IUI, we would say that a count of more than 5 million motile sperms has to be there for us to get a good result. We have to do insemination with washed semen sample. This has to be remembered. We cannot use raw semen sample to do insemination because that would lead to a lot of complications. Now, what, does me, what do you mean by washing of the semen? Semen is a body liquid. It's a body fluid. It contains plasma. It contains dead cells. 
it contains other white blood cells and other cells as well and it also contains live sperms. We have to make sure that we take out the healthy live sperms from the semen, keep everything else and then wash the semen from all toxicities and then suspend it in a media containing nutritional elements and use only those sperms suspended in the media to be pushed inside the lady's womb. So there is an entire process of separating the healthy sperms and suspending them in a nutrition rich media is known as washing of semen sample. Intrauterine insemination is a specialized technique. You require a doctor to do it. Per se, putting the semen in the womb is not so difficult. But we need to remember that the semen has to be properly washed to prevent infections and other complications. And that washing can never be done in a home. It has to be done by qualified personnel in a proper lab. In some couples where erectile dysfunction leads to failure of consummation or no physical contact between both partners, it can be tried to put raw semen in the vagina of the female partner for a couple of cycles. If she doesn't conceive, then she can take professional opinion. But as a routine, we would strongly discourage you from trying out inseminations at home. No, in fact, most IUIs have no complications whatsoever. Sometimes when the access to the womb is difficult, the mouth of the uterus called the cervix is stenose, that it is tightly closed. We might have to use an instrument to open it up before putting the semen inside. Only in those circumstances, there could be some bleeding or I would say spotting immediately after the insemination. For most other cases, there is no instance of bleeding or other complications following insemination. Essentially, IUI is a painless and a safe procedure. There are hardly any complications. But we have to remember that the washing of the semen sample has to be done properly. If there is some infection left behind or what we say prostaglandins that are left behind in the washed semen sample, that might lead to painful cramps. Sometimes you could have infection also in the female partner if it's not done properly. Other than that, there are hardly any complications. If you count multiple pregnancies as a complication, yes, there's another complication that in terms of you could have multiple pregnancies such as twins or triplets. But if you have a carefully calibrated ovulation induction where only two or three follicles are allowed to grow and a properly washed semen sample put in the womb by a professional person, then the chances of complications are almost nil. In Indian currency terms, an IUI along with the medication and the blood test that's needed would not cost more than 10,000 rupees per attempt. But then the cost could vary. You could have a younger woman who does not require much of a fertility medication and you could have women who are at a higher age who require a lot of injections for her eggs to grow, in which case the cost could go up. But in any case, the cost should not be anything more than 18, 20,000 rupees at the max even for women who require injections. This is a very tricky question. IUI per se is the start of assisted reproductive techniques. If we do not get a pregnancy through an IUI, we move on to higher techniques such as an IVF. We should be mindful of the fact that IUI works only in a small population. For most of the people, it may require that you move on to either an IVF or an ICSI or some higher techniques. If we delay too much and do too many IUI cycles, I might be compromising the results of IVF. For me, as a ballpark, three or four IUIs is more than enough. If it doesn't work within three or four IUIs, we need to move on. If the lady is more than 35 years old, maybe even two IUIs is good enough for me.